Hey, Rally Besties. Welcome back to the Writing with Annie podcast, where we talk about all things writing. Hello, everyone. It's been so long since I've been like, I, I've said that because I haven't posted on my podcast for so long and I'm so embarrassed. But hello, I'm so glad to be back and I'm glad to have you guys back listening in to my yappy, yappy, yappa voice. Um, but the reason why I was gone for so long is because, yeah, it just got a lot in the Netherlands. I studied like on exchange for six months um, in Europe and I just needed to prioritize my main channel a little bit. So of course you guys probably like watched me on there, but I still miss just chatting with you for like 15, 20 minutes, chilling with you guys. Really like I adore that with all my heart, but yeah, I'm sorry, but it's coming back every single Wednesday. If you guys just like need some sort of writing advice, sort of like writing um yeah chill time throughout the week come on my podcast every Wednesday and you can yeah get some writing vibes in um but today we're gonna be talking about some writer advice um and I asked you guys on my Instagram go follow me it's underscore Anna New um yeah I asked you guys some something what did I ask you guys (laughs) I asked you guys some just like writer tips write a questions if you want and truly these questions are like really really good I'm very excited to answer them like they're so valid and I think so many writers go through this even me I go through a lot of these things so I hope you stay toward the end um and listen to every piece of advice and every question because they're very valid um the last thing I need to say before we get into the questions is I don't know if you see this over here if you're just listening to the audio version of my podcast I have my 100k play button, which is like the first time I'm featuring featuring it in a video. Um, thank you guys so much for 100k. That's amazing. It's so beautiful and it says my name on it. And I kind of like look at it sometimes and I'm like, I'm an actual, like, blah, blah, blah. I'm an actual YouTuber. And I forget that sometimes for some reason. But thank you guys. We did it. Oh my gosh. 100k. That's crazy. So I love you all so, so much. Thank you with all of my heart. But um, yeah, with that out of the way, let's get on to the questions. Let's go. Okay. The first question is how to manage school and writing together. And this is a question that I have myself. I've been wondering that myself because um, I've just started uni up again. Like as soon as I got back to Australia, it was two days before I had to go to my first class. I'm in law school, if you guys don't know, um, and it's, it's it, yeah, mm, mm, yeah, it's interesting. Anyways, obviously, writing takes up a lot of time, but also my studies do, and I've truly tried my best to find, you know, a routine that works for me um, through, like, blocking, you know, maybe I write every two days, but I write for, like, you know, two hours, blah, blah, blah. But I find the best thing that I can do and that I'm trying to do is to simply write every day and write for an hour a day. And I know that's like pretty crazy and that might be quite hectic for you to find that time to write. But truly, I think the only way to get progress in your book while you are amongst the busyness of your um, degree or your schooling year, like it's just a commit you know, a little time every single day and work on your goals, your dreams every single day. And I've been doing this in like other aspects of my life too, um, not just writing. So for example, I have just like things that I try to do every single day to work towards my goal, like um, go to the gym, um, like, yeah, write, work on my YouTube somehow, like do an Instagram post, a poem, anything um and also spend time with God like those are the four sort of main things that I have that I just work towards every day like those sorts of hobbies so that's my advice is to (sighs) there is no way to manage it the only way is to just commit to some hobbies every single day in order to get better truly like that is (laughs) that's that's my only piece of advice not very good I know but maybe try that and maybe have a rest day every week or something um next question what practices do you do to enhance your writing skills okay so the main thing that popped into my mind when I heard this question was poetry write poetry and also read classical books 
those two things are the main things that I really recommend and that I've been doing to personally improve not only my vocabulary through like reading really classical books, but also to um, practice it and practice um, intuitive writing in terms with poetry. I do hope to do a poetry updated video um, tutorial type. This is how I write my poetry um, because my other one I did kind of got like a bit viral not viral viral but like a lot of people watched that and I got so embarrassed because I was like I feel I didn't explain myself properly but um anyways yes those are the two things that I recommend to get better at writing and also short stories that was probably more self-explanatory um but I am re currently reading um the catcher in the Ra the but can I speak I'm not used to this guys I'm sorry if I'm like not normal um, the Catcher in the Rye. Uh, it's a really good novel. I really adore it. I think I've just I literally learn something new every single time I read a classical novel. And this particular book, I have learnt the importance of developing a character voice, and in that, at least the story has particular things that I that stand out to me. From the character and how the character describes certain things for example like it's probably not a good example but it says exactly what I need to say the character describes a lot of things as crummy which I I don't know I've never really thought of that it's kind of like a very informal weird boyish way of describing things like he describes um, a chair as crummy or a bathroom as crummy or as crummy fingers and it's so I don't know it describes so much and I've learned that and I really want to implement that in my own writing um the same way I kind of hope to do that in my poetry so yeah that's a really good question though I'm very very glad you want to enhance your writing through other means instead of just simply practicing blindly through writing book after book which is quite huge undertakings but next question is how to develop characters you really love and stay committed to um yeah <laughs> that's really hard I would personally I mean this is I love all my characters truly but I've definitely begun to appreciate terrible characters as my favorite type of characters I think finding flaws and kind of relatability toward yourself onto your characters usually writers do this quite um subconsciously <laughs> I guess but I really do encourage you to try that and just kind of make your characters not the best people. <laughs> um, it really depends on the context of your story. But that's something I like to do. And spending time with your characters simply through writing the book, I think inevitably you'll really love your characters and they'll develop in front of your eyes. Um, something that I truly appreciate is especially what my characters do for other characters, which... It's interesting and I keep going back to the example I talk about in like all my podcasts which is Project Orchestra. It's a historical fiction where a young conductor um, recruits a busking homeless violinist into the prestigious um, London Academy or something um, of music um, and the two characters are so they foil one another so much that especially Alex I don't really love I mean I love him obviously as a character but I love him ever more for what he does for Lewis the other character the homeless violinist um and yeah I think maybe think about that and think about it's also a good way of developing characters through their influence on one another and make that a, like a huge core of the plot and I think that really helps ensure that you let your characters change and let your characters influence not only the world that they in, they're in, but also other people. Because, I mean, just look at the world and look at psychology. Like, I am who I am because of people's impressions upon me. I'm just a reflection of everyone around me. And so are your characters. So that's what I really encourage. Um, next question. What does your setup look like when writing at your desk? And what are your essentials? This question was quite interesting because I was like, <laughs> I looked at my desk and I'm like, ah, it's a really messy setup just because I've been moving back, you know, and like unpacking all my stuff from my six month trip. 
But my desk truly is not the cleanest thing. It's simple, which I think is, you know, a piece of advice that is helpful maybe. Keep your desk simple. All you need is a computer or a desktop and a keyboard. I mean, personally, I'm quite blessed to have a nice display, kind of, uh, you know, computer desktop, which is a lot bigger. I can split screen, which I usually actually do use a lot. I usually split screen and I've showed this in a couple of my videos where I have my manuscript document um, on one half and then I have like either a Pinterest page or my plotting document on the other half, which I find extremely helpful. I also have a keyboard, which is nice and clicky. It's like a particular, very nice keyboard. I have a link in the description if you guys want to check, you know, what sort of keyboard I have. Um, but those two things I love, like a really nice computer and a really nice keyboard because that helps writing. But again, it's like quite simple. I don't have any other gadgets or gizmos or anything like that. Um, and there was something, oh yeah, the last thing I really do encourage on your space is actually to use your phone as a timer. As I mentioned in the first tip is to set a timer or like at least write for an hour. And that helps me. I don't know what it is, like especially when you use your phone. You cannot use it because you're using it to time yourself. The same way, like, you can also use it to time lapse yourself. So you're not on your phone. And it's really encouraging seeing the timer go down and down and down. And I get distracted and I end up, you know, finishing the timer quite quickly. Um, but that's what I use. Literally, like, the just the clock timer on the iPhone. And, yeah, my stuff. Okay, next question. How to be a prettier and less cringe writer? I want to write something beautiful, not cringe. Um, this is interesting. <laughs> I think it's just time, truly, that allows you to continually write better and better and find your own voice as an author. Um, something to be a lot more prettier. I think writing poetry does help a lot. I think I've begun to write a lot of, um, yeah, a lot better prose, a lot better descriptions just because I've practiced through my poetry and that translates to my manuscripts. Um, but something very particular I found, I was talking to one of my friends um, and it's not really pretty writing, but it's quite unique writing, similar to the character voice that I talked about in The Catcher in the Rye. Um, but this is more so concerning, I don't know, kind of vocab it depends on where your character is from if you're writing just normal literary fiction I'm Australian so I kind of uh, explain things a bit differently or just simply call different terms differently like uh, a doona um, we call a doona what's it called a duvet I think that's the same thing or like a blanket on your um, but of course if your character is not Australian don't do it but I think adding your own voice your own perception to your book might also help not make it prettier but just make it more original more nice um this can be similar to for example the way that you think about things for some reason i think rain smells like ants i don't understand people who don't think that because um ants go crazy if you haven't noticed like they know when the storm is coming so they go crazy and i can smell ants it's a sort of like stingy like do you know the smell of ants <laughs> I was talking to my friend and he's like, what the heck are you talking about? I'm like, yeah, like rain smells like ants and metal. And then he's like, no, it doesn't. Um, <clears throat> and like part of me just wants to delete that because I get so embarrassed. I'm like, oh, I'm the only person who thinks that. But no, that's a part of the character. The fact that the character attributes that to that. You know what I mean? So don't delete things from your story. I think it comes very naturally. Um, so maybe try that potentially. Um, but yeah, that's that's my answer. Alrighty, the next question is what to do when you're stuck in your book and want to start a new one. This usually has to do with um, not procrastination, uh, just trust issues. No, I'm kidding. Um, I I also struggle very much with starting new projects. I struggle with um, working on one project at a time. Um, I'm the sort of writer who writes completely different genres. Um, the next book I've written historical fictions, high fantasies, literary fiction, romance. Uh, I'm even starting a sci-fi and then I'm also writing a like post apocalyptic dystopian. 
So I understand this fully. Um, the one thing that I would do if you're stuck in a new book is to take a pause, understand why you're stuck, write down things that you can do to get unstuck. So I think it's really important to understand, yeah, what's the problem? So is it a plot thing? Do you just simply not know what's going on? Is it maybe you just lost passion in your project and want to find something new? Is it maybe because you've lost faith in the idea and want to move on? Like these are very valid reasons why you're stuck. Um, but, you know, decide if you want to shelve or decide if you want to stick it out. And if you want to stick it out, don't stick it out right then and there, but take a break. And you can take a break through writing short fiction, poetry or something or just nothing, period. And just reading and writing um, nothing. So that's my <laughs> advice. If you want to move on to another book and start a new one, I fully encourage it. Literally what happened with Project Orchestra is I had this idea. I just finished, like actually quite, uh, it kind of worked out well. I just finished another project, um, like the Zero Draft. And then I was about to start on, I think, the second draft or something like that. But I got, in that little window of time, I got this idea for Project Orchestra, which was simply an uh, idea about, yeah, literally a busking violinist. Um, and I had this scene in mind and I was like literally the tiny seed I had for that book. And if I didn't jump on that, I would have regretted that for my whole life because I wouldn't have been able to write a draft like that then. Um, so in my opinion, I know it's probably not the best. I say go for it. Like I'm one of the passion girlies that if you feel something, go for it because you might not feel the same again. So if you want to start a new project, start a new project. Bestie, I have faith in you. I have faith in you and know that you're, you're, um, the stuff that you worked on, you can come back to it. Um, a lot of people get stressed, like it's going to disappear. No, um, your passion might change and you might end up shelving that story forever, but it just depends on what you're passionate about at the time. I kind of, I mean, I don't know if this is a good comparison, but my mom said to me, I, I remember just looking at like rings. Um, like I was, I love rings. Um, and they're like this thing of engage, engagement rings. And my mom just randomly said like, Anna, when you get married, don't think about the future too much. Just think about how you feel in the moment. And if you feel that it's right in the moment, you will work it out eventually. So that's kind of the extreme way I view writing and projects and passion projects, especially. Um, of course, it depends unless you're on like a time crunch and you need, need to publish an actual book. Do that. <laughs> Don't like um, let your editors stress. Um, but yeah. Go for it, I say. Next question is, I can never get through the first draft stage due to imposter syndrome. Any advice? Imposter syndrome. Yes, bestie. I feel so sorry. Imposter syndrome literally sucks. I've gotten it so much editing because, of course, you're just looking at how bad your story is and trying to make it better. So therefore, you just automatically think it's terrible. Um, but in terms of getting through the first draft, I completely understand that it is extremely difficult. Um, sometimes truly, and this might be not a, like a good piece of advice, but that's just the reality. And I think sometimes it just depends on the book. You need to find the right book that allows you to finish, that allows you, that, <laughs> what, that allows you to finish it. Yeah. It's kind of like, like I think books or like stories are breathing and some need time for you to fully, you know, have time to actually write it. And I've described this a lot in some of my re like quite older videos where when I write in the stories that I come up with, they're always in me. It's a weird sort of thing. Like I just haven't discovered them. So there's lots of stories that are still in me that I don't have the heart to tell tell don't have maybe the skills to tell not in the right mindset to tell or perhaps I've told a little bit as you, as you have in your first draft but you just need time to continue that and I think it's okay to move on as I said with the last 
question. It's okay to move on. It's okay to take a break um, and understand why. Because usually if you're stuck in your project, that's quite demotivating. It's quite like, what's wrong with me? It can be a majority, like a whole bunch of reasons, as I've said before. Um, But just think about that. Think about why you feel imposter syndrome. And I guess coming from the question, you maybe feel like you're not enough to finish the book. And that can obviously translate to maybe you're just not ready. And maybe that story is not to be told yet. And maybe you simply don't have the skills, which is completely fine. You will get the skills eventually. But it's okay to take a break. And sometimes you truly just got to find those golden projects. Um, The next best thing to kind of give you advice on is to look at my plotting videos. That really helps. Usually when I'm stuck in a book, what I do is go back to the plot because nine times out of ten, it's just because I don't know what the heck is happening. um, And I don't know how to get, I know how to get, I know what A and B is and C, but I just don't know how to get to A, B and C, if that makes sense. Um, So plot it out, go to some of my plotting videos. I talk a lot about how to plot through settings. um, And that's one of the tips I always give to y'all. Look at my plotting videos. They actually help people. Um, Okay, we have three more questions left. This is quite a long episode. Um, Next question is, have you ever tried to write male POV? If yes, can you share some tips or insights? This is quite an interesting question. I didn't think about this, about like writing male, because I guess, mm, I don't know if it's different as a male writer to write a woman as it is. To me, it was quite natural to me. I don't know. Maybe it's because the sexuality of the the character isn't important in the book. So it's their relations aren't as gendered. Does that make sense? Like sometimes main characters are just main characters. It's kind of like how you write children. Like it doesn't matter if it's a girl or a boy. It's just that's kind of how I view my characters. Of course, when I have written male POV books, I have actually for two books, I first met in a graveyard and also Project Project Orchestra, sorry. Um, and I don't really know. I think it was fine. <laughs> um, I think something, I think it's very, very important yet to keep in mind that they are a male character and to what extent you can actually portray that correctly. Um, I think anyone can portray anyone um really you don't have to be a woman to write a woman character um yeah I really don't know that's that question quite stumped me um because in a male POV it just doesn't phase me I guess um yeah unless if it's like a romance type because I have written romances in POVs for male a male character but yeah I truly don't think there's a difference I don't know why I think it's because yeah I just write a character I'm sorry there's actually I wonder what you guys think what do you guys think um sometimes I honestly feel more comfortable writing in a male a male character just because I don't relate to them as much so they're a lot more objective which maybe is not a good thing if you're trying to write a realistic person um but yeah, maybe look at the insecurities a male might have in comparison to a woman. I think, yeah, if you just think about the comparison of like how a male character might be shaped differently to a female character, dependent on how their upbringing was, um, et cetera, et cetera. I think it comes very self subconsciously as well. Um, yeah, because like, for example, in Project BB, I have Robin, who's a girl. And her gender is quite um, explicitly, like, important, or more so unimportant in the book. So, yeah, that's something I touch on really, really quite intentionally. So that just depends on your book and the themes in your novel. But, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not very helpful. Next question is, how do you manage to work on so many projects at the same time and still make progress? And when I read this, I was like... Um, yes, I do work on many projects at once. Do I make project progress, project projects? No, I don't make progress. 
um, which is quite sad. Usually I try my best, but truly multitasking is quite unwise, I have found. Um, work on one project, finish it, and work on the other project. If you want to be, like, especially, make maybe it's holidays for you. I know it's summer for the other side of the world. But, um, like, I would be plotting something and then writing a manuscript, for example. Or brainstorming something and plotting the first draft. You know, I think it's important not to be in the same, in two different manuscripts at once. Like either be focusing on editing or either be focusing on brainstorming. So you're, mo you're using different muscles and not getting too exhausted. Especially also if they're two different genres, that's usually helpful as well since um, you don't get confused. Um, but that's something I do. I mean, right now I am brainstorming a new secret project that I've hinted on my Instagram. Go follow me again, underscore Anna New. Um... But I am also editing Ghost Side. And usually editing is probably the best. I can only really brainstorm or write a book or plot a book while I'm editing. Because editing, although it's really difficult and really taxing, it's something that's really, I, I set apart. I set apart, you know what I mean? So I encourage that. The last question is, how young is too young to be an author? And I read this and I'm like, no one's ever too young. But I truly do think, and I've been coming to this realization of, <laughs> people do tell me I'm a bit weird because I cannot wait to get older. I cannot wait to be 30. I cannot wait to be wise beyond my years. No, I'm kidding. I want to be wise for my years. I want to experience so that I can have a new perspective. Because um, that all ties back to a conversation I had with, like I stayed with the host family back in the Netherlands and the mother I remember I was turning 20 this year and I was, you know, I'm like, don't you ever get scared of getting older? And she's like, no, I welcome it um, because she said she feels so much surer of herself. She feels, yeah, more confident. And she actually says something really interesting that was simply like things don't matter as much. So I think as a young writer, a lot of the, the pressure, the sort of, Knowing you don't know much is very discouraging um, and very difficult. That's why there's lots of older authors who are, you know, 30, 40, 50, sometimes even 60, writing wonderful books straight off the bat. I mean, maybe not straight off the bat, but they've had that time to just mature as a human. And people don't talk about how human you need to be to write something, um, period, because it's such a humanizing experience, um, reflecting and writing. And if you don't have that simply like backlog of knowledge, it's sometimes really difficult to pull things out of a hat, if you know what I mean, because you can actually pull from new experiences, new memories, new people that you've um, learned. And that doesn't say that young writers are worse or less capable, but that's just saying it's a lot easier once you get older. So me as 20... Um, I definitely find that I have a lot more, I have a bigger tool set to write um, and I feel a lot more confident. That's why I've kind of felt a little bit hostile towards ghost side because I don't know, I don't know because yeah, I don't know because like I wrote that when I was 18 or 19 and my, my sort of writing style has changed. So sometimes it does actually depend on your project and also on your audience, um, if that makes sense. So like I want to write like crazy. I want to write like profound things. Like that's sort of my vibe right now, but I can't because it's like a ghost book for like, you know, more so teenagers, not for like huge adults, huge adults. Um, but I don't think anyone's too young to be an author. But that, oh wait, that does depend. Sorry, I'm ranting a bit. But that does depend on whether you call an author a published author or you just think of an author. Because I think writers, any writer can be an author because they're the scribes of their own novels. But if you're a published author, I think that's a little bit different. Just because of reality, but also because of the, yeah. I mean, yeah, I hate the world because of how it looks down on youth um, and our capabilities but sometimes I understand um, it. 
Um, I, I certainly don't feel confident enough to be picked up by a publisher because I haven't. <laughs> so maybe that's another question for another day. Um, but no, be an author, pursue everything and you will get better as you do so. And I hope these answers were coherent enough for you to understand at least partially. Um, I miss you guys so, so much. So, so, so much. Thank you. Uh, and yeah, I don't know. I'm just still thinking about so many of the questions. I don't think I answered properly. But let me know questions. Let me know answers down below so I can get more feedback so we can just help each other out. Um, but yeah, I love you all so, so much. Thank you so much for listening into this huge, long episode. I hope you're doing well. I hope your projects are doing well. Um, and yeah, stay tuned for Wednesday uploads on my podcast including, you know, I upload on my Instagram. No, I upload on my YouTube as well. But do follow my Instagram. Mm-hmm, that's where my brain was going. Um, but yeah, I hope you're doing well in your projects. Stay, stay safe, stay writing and stay not burnt out because I know it's that time of the year. But yeah, I love you all so, so much. Thank you again for 100K. I love you all um, with all my heart and I'm going to stop right now before I... Run out of battery. Okay. I love you. Bye-bye.